My name is Archbishop Tabo Makhoba. Uh, this week I'm coming to you from the Center for Spirituality, now called the Center for Reflection and Development, which uh, sadly in the past uh, is called the Slave Quarters. And uh, it is my prayer that the name changes reflects that transformation is possible only when we acknowledge where we have been, where we are, and where we are heading. Most High God, majestic and mighty, our beginning and our end, rule in our hearts and guide us to be faithful, worshipping the one who comes as saviour and sovereign and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 24. <laughs> Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter beginning from the first verse. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. Jesus also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in all she had to live on. As we prepare for our Advent journey, marking the beginning of a new liturgical year. The themes of hope and anticipation at the coming of Christ will fill our thoughts and prayers. Also this week we will begin the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, during which we will focus on the second shadow pandemic in South Africa. I urge you to follow the provincial Facebook and website for details of webinars and resources on gender-based violence in the coming days. My reflection at this time, and I encourage you to also do your own reflections at home, will be based on a combination of Benedictine spirituality and the practice of scriptural reading, meditation and prayer known as Lectio Divina, and adding a tangible, practical, 
physical work with my hands. So today we also commemorate Clement, the Bishop of Rome and Mata. And in my reflection, I weave in his example of humility, which is appropriate for men today as we acknowledge our privilege and the violence that some of us inflict on women and children. And I repent and I call all men to repent. In the Gospel reading, the false religiosity of the scribes is sharply contrasted with the generosity of a poor widow who gave everything she possessed as her offering. A gift in the sight of Jesus was the greatest for what God measures is not much the size of the gift as what remains after it has been given. Her example in turn calls us to give our all in service to God. Just as the psalmist invites us to ask, particularly given the challenges we face in our country and beyond, who shall ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Are we able? May we demonstrate our fitness to answer God's calls to us by ensuring that we too are people of clean hands and pure hearts.